Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the D2 Talks. My name is Fabio Palvelli and on this channel every week we bring you talks with some of the best artists from the archivist industry. So if you're new here, please do consider subscribing. This week I have on the show Luis Mario Gutierrez of We Do, a company based in Mexico. Now, a lot of people that watch our show actually come from Mexico, Latin America, South America, and there was a huge demand for us to have a chat with somebody working in that area. Luis is a super fun, humble guy to talk to and I really enjoyed having this chat with him. So I really look forward to share this with you guys. Also, a little bit of an announcement. This is the last talk that we have prepared for this channel. Reason for that is that we are getting very busy with the preparation of the D2 conference. There is a lot happening and we need to spend this last few months finalizing. Also, we're working on some other projects that we are going to then publish on this channel. So make sure you subscribe. I will also be a little bit busy on my own personal channel because of the same reasons, but I'll try to post as much as I can in the meantime. So don't worry about it. You just need to know that this is a momentary Thing and soon things will go back to full production. Anyway, as always, enough of me, blah, blah, blah. Enjoy this beautiful talk. Two, one, and we're live. Well, <laughs> Luis, we're not live, I'm recording, but you know, you and I are live, so we can start yeah. talking to each other. How are you, my friend? Very good, very good. Thank you uh, very much for taking the time to do this. No, pleasure. I am very excited to, to, to have you on our D2 Talks, uh, mainly because um, we never really had anybody from Latin America or South America or anyway, that part of the world doing an interview with us. And we're very excited because a lot of people that interact with our community actually come from that part of the world. Okay. So, you know... I'm going to have a bunch of questions for you, which I really hope you can answer so that, you know, maybe some designers and visualizers in uh, your area can get a little bit of inspiration and maybe learn something new. Maybe. <laughs> Let's so, get those things started. <laughs> <laughs> so you are the, the principal, the founder of We Do Visualization, right? Yes. Exactly. Where are you guys based? We're based in Mexico City. Um, I'm, I'm from the northern part of Mexico, but I've been living here uh, almost eight years ago. Uh, but I started this uh, 11 years ago. This like, 11 years? 11 years, yeah. So I started you're a veteran. <laughs> I'm a veteran, yeah. Uh, but I'm young. How but old are you? I'm 35. Okay, so you are very young and very successful already. <laughs> oh, thank you. I don't know that, but yeah, young, yes. <laughs> um, well, now, please continue. Sorry. Um, no, no, I mean, I mean, we've been established here in Mexico City for the last uh, nine years. Well, eight years. And yeah, I mean, we're in the central part of Mexico, so... How did you get started in, in this business? Hmm. How did you move your first steps? My first steps? Um, well, actually, I'm an industrial designer, not an architect. Okay. Um, and I remember I had a, a course, which I was flunking okay. in, in the university. Um, that we, it, it involved um, 3D modeling. And well, I started like learning all this, the, the technology, the, the, the basis from, from that uh, course. Um, and, and I started making my own things in, like, in my house, in my apartment when, when I was studying in Monterrey. Um, and I started doing very cheap <laughs> things for uh, friends and, and, and got the work passed by from universities that that guy did a visualization for for uh, final exams and all that things. Um, and, and I started like, like, like that. Uh, I mean, that was uh, almost 11 years ago. So that, no, even more, I think, like 14. Um, and, you know, I, I started very, very like, low and with not that a lot of knowledge, but I got interested 
and there, it's a funny story. Since I was flunking that uh, uh, course, I had to had like an A plus on my final exam. So I I didn't go out for the la for the last two weeks, and I just started making my own things for that final project. And it was I remember we had to do us as industrial designers had to do the the robot from for Sony, this Abo robot I think that it's called. It's like a little robotic um, dog. Oh, yeah, 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 of course, of course, of course. Ah, I think I saw some of those pictures somewhere. But anyway, continue. So, okay, we had to model uh, us as industrial, industrial designers. And I remember I got very into detail to, to pass that course. And it was such, like, uh, the, 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 the teachers were amazed of the quality of it. So they just... Uh, ask me after the exam like personal questions like if I hadn't done it on like with someone else and I mean all, obviously I answered all of them correctly like I, this part I did like this I started modeling like that I applied this material etc and well I passed the the, the course the, like almost um, and that that day, I, I said to myself, "I don't want to um, hear about this ever again." Like all this <laughs> thing. And I got back to my hometown. Uh, it was a summer vacations, and my dad uh, got me a a well an internship with an architect. And since I'm not an architect, uh, I present I presented uh, that day with, with the, the architect and. He told me, well, okay, you know arch architectural uh, software? And I'm not, I just learned this uh, 3D modeling uh, software this uh, last semester. And he was, okay, great. You could help with uh, some interiors we're designing. And I was like, ah, oh, no. <laughs> I didn't want to. Put the microphone yeah. a little bit closer. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry about no, that. No, no, um, you're, you're going away. Don't worry. It's fine. And, and I, was, I was like, oh, I mean, I didn't want to hear about this again ever. And so that's when I realized, I, I mean, I got into detail to start modeling things that were, didn't exist. Um, and, and that's when I realized that you can create things from zero and try to achieve like uh, photorealism. Oh, back in the day, it wasn't photorealistic. But <laughs> I, I don't, once you get into it, if you start to realize materials and start understanding light and all that, and how to recreate it in, in a virtual world. And, and nowadays, that's what... Uh, it brings the bacon to our family, to our yeah. home. You know, uh, it's that's when I, I always wondered how to recreate things that are realistically achievable, and that's what got me into doing what we do. <laughs> what we do, <laughs> we do exactly. Uh, dude, listen. Um, one of the reasons why I'm very excited to have you on this show is that. A lot of people that come from uh, Latin America and uh, Southern, Southern America as well, they complain about the fact that, you know, they say the clients don't pay money, that, mm. you know, the, the quality of work, it's uh, very bad in, in that area. And actually, I know people like you, I know people like, uh, we were talking about it, uh, Sergio or Sergio Garzon, uh, mm that, you know, produce, like, uh, outstanding stuff and talking to them also on the uh, economical aspect of things, um, mm -hmm. they don't seem to complain about it, you know? They say, no, business is thriving. It's just okay. that you know how to, how to do it. All right, all right. Um, yeah, I mean, to get paid is one of... It has to be a master's for... It's a never-ending school. Uh, to achieve that as a constant thing on your daily business thing, 
uh, would be the, the greatest success for a client relationship because, I mean, you, you can do the service and, and the product, but to receive that money and time and, and more, it's, it's kind of complicated. I mean, here uh, we kind of have those problems um, and, and those are the, like the terms the clients have. Uh, like, okay, we need this for yesterday, and we're going to pay you in two months. Are you in or are you out? And, I mean, it's trying to find that uh, balance between working that hard and being and receiving money to be profitable, you know, and, 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 and as a company. But, I mean, it, it's hard. I mean, even I, I've... I think the, I mean, big studios all will have it as well, like to be paid in time or not. Um, I, I think it's part of the process. I hope it wasn't, <laughs> you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if if you can offer good service and a good quality on your on your products, you can make good money of it. I mean, it's, 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 How it's, many it's, people are you in the office? Right now we're four, counting me. Uh, there's a, a teammate that left a year ago, but he's still like um, working in some projects with us as in, in distance. But they, like in two weeks, there's a one person joining the team, and probably in mid year we'll, we'll be having another uh, another artist joining so the it's a, it's relatively like boutique style kind of uh, office yeah 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 our yeah I mean what we're we create once we start a project we try to re, really understand it on even in illumination how the shadow and the lights will work on that project, how the facade will be working on kind of a day. Uh, and we try to create this narrative story thing to try to sell the, the client, which not all the, the cases are 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 accepted. <laughs> Most of them are the client. Uh, I, I remember the, the image you posted on a little doll that the, the, what, the, the, what the architects uh, delivering what the and what it happens after the clients uh, yeah do that it's pretty much that um, and but we always get ourselves into a story because it's, it creates a purpose for that image to be produced and I mean that's the way we like to work uh, naturally on, on, on each image. I mean, you guys are very famous for, you know, the way you use people in your renderings. Oh, we didn't know that. <laughs> well, you know, everybody, uh, when, I, when I talk about, you know, um, very often when we have discussions about narrative and so on, I made a video on my YouTube channel about it. Very often people bring the, the example of how you guys do it from a technical point of view because you know you're very good at doing this photo I insertions and also you know the the roles that people play in your renderings like i uh, i'm gonna put some examples on the screen so you can talk about it okay sure. yeah just keep going <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean uh to have an understanding of how the elimination uh, affects your 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 scene. Uh, it's had to represent as well for the people integration. Once we do it, um, yeah, I mean, not all the cases are do work with a with a story that we propose, but it's I mean it's fun and, and, and it keeps you creative once you do it, even if it's uh, accepted or not, and. You, I mean, you can tell a story with, with and without people. I mean, like yeah, of else, course, of course. Um, and a, even with only light, I mean, you can create li like this following moody thing. Um, 
towards the, the, the image book. Yeah, I think it's something more oriented on what to tell, how to differentiate your image, probably with the other one. <laughs> No, I agree, you know, it's uh, now I'm looking through your images and uh, I remember that there are uh, there were some images that really caught my attention because, you know, uh, of what you were saying, how to, uh, you know, tell a story with light. And there are some images, I, I remember looking at them, I have to find them, uh, where, you know, you kind of see the mood of the light together with the details and you understand that this is a place that, you know, you can enjoy at a certain time of the day, like, say, in the evening after you come back from work and you have no people inside the image. Or there are this image, I remember there was this image, I think it was your image of a, a father holding a kid, oh, yeah. uh, enjoying like a living room or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that story was uh, mommy is coming home. Okay, well... You because, see, so... <laughs> oh, oh, daddy, daddy time. Uh, yeah, it, it was this, um, uh, I mean, the, the father was holding up the, the child and the, the child is representing like a happy uh, smile of, of connection with the mother that's arriving. And although he doesn't see her uh, since she's on the hallway... Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. She, she's walking inside the frame, I think. And yeah. I think, you know, it's... Uh, I mean, I understand that sometimes clients will not go for it because, you know, they maybe have this idea that, you know, you have to really understand the space, what you're looking at architecturally. But, you know, very often the, the problem is the opposite, that those who look at these images don't understand necessarily architecture they are more interested in the human side of an image you know uh, okay. and sometimes yeah. sometimes making the image nevertheless even though you know that the uh, client will not go for it it will still build a very strong portfolio right yeah and i mean it's we're more into obviously selling the the space itself uh, since that's the whole point. I mean, you're selling architecture. Our clients are selling these spaces uh, where you want to buy them, etc. Uh, but the thing that we, when when we create or we when we are uh, able to create a story, it's to engage more of that feeling in that space. I mean, I want I want that apartment because I want to do that with my kid. And things like that. I, I want to do. I want to be that father. I want to be that grandfather. I want to be that person, uh, drinking um, a cup of tea or something in, in that kitchen. It's that, that's how we see things, and that's why stories are come first in, in the production pipeline. But I mean, some of her, some of them get um, declined. You know. <laughs> I'm okay. looking okay. now. I'm looking now at some of your pictures from 2012. <laughs> okay, that's good. So the the very beginning, but still, it's very, uh, you know, it's very interesting to see how you guys evolved. You know, okay. did okay. you, did, how did you learn these tools? Did you do it by yourself, or did you go to conferences? What did you do? No, I always all. All I learned was uh, by myself. Really? Yeah. So everything uh, self-taught? Self-taught, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been around. <laughs> it's like been 14 yeah, Some years. renderings from 2012 are still better than most of the stuff that I see now at the <laughs> online. No, I'm, sh I'm showing you. some of your renderings so that people can, uh, can see them. Okay. I mean, you know, I I get it. It's uh, you know, it's cool stuff, and it's uh, it's all very like uh, I don't know. It's impact, you know, uh, look, so to say. Oh. Even Thanks. even this stuff. Now I remember that um, I started to follow you guys uh, online mainly okay. because of the of the fact that you know you were pioneers. 
Like, mm -hmm. I really remember it, you know. I have an a, a, a internet friend of mine, uh, Angel, you know, Quintana. Oh, Angel Quintana, all right, yeah. yeah. Cool. And, uh, you know, he's been always very active with, like, parametric modeling and also oh, rendering yeah. and so on. So I remember that back then when, uh, when I first got started, around 2010, 11, he was extremely active online. And then he showed me the work that you guys were doing. And I was like, oh, God damn, this is the level that I have to, to go through. Wow, thank you. <laughs> no, uh, you know, now, now you see it, uh, uh. how it has evolved, and you can really tell that it's client work, which is, you know, fantastic, because this is the whole point of having a company. How yeah. many images do you guys produce every month, every year? Ooh, that's a tricky question. <laughs> and... I don't know if I have the answer, the correct answer for that one. Um, I mean, it's not that much. Um, probably around six and eight a month. Per month, okay. Now, you know, if you're four people and you work really hard on one image, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, yeah, we, I mean, we have more, we do more tailored work, so it's, they, there, it has more of a production timeline, since quick images that we all also do, I mean, we have, we have produced three images in two days for a, a contest and all that, and I mean, we, we can do that uh, quick express work. But a lot of it gets, like, passed away. Uh, yeah, of course. And, and also, one never wants to show that kind of work. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm interested to know something. Um, are you guys looking into any sort of, like, uh, technology for the future, like VR, uh, augmented reality, immersive stuff? Are you guys playing around with those tools we had well we did um last december we just played around with vr quickly uh but our intentions for this year to start more developing more vr uh we're, we're kind of a we're always uh a step back from the rest of the, the industry uh actually we started doing animations uh like two years ago uh we, we've been experimenting like uh, a couple of years back, but never had a final product of, of animations. And we're always like that step uh, like back, but we try to do the things like more with more of a, how do you call that? A, more of a sense of what it is. Um, and probably, I mean, VR, we will start doing some more experiments this year. That's for sure. And I mean, I, uh, you know, you just said that you recently started doing animations. I remember I saw a video that you guys published about a year ago. You gave me a link before. I'm going to play it very quickly because, you know, the, the, the quality and everything is just stunning. Okay. Hold on, give me a second. I'm going to put the, the volume down because it doesn't matter. I'm, if people will see it and they will look for it. But uh, but I think it's super cool, you know. It's uh, You also managed to put, like, animated people inside, moving the camera, pretending that, you know, they're you're yeah, recording that. the actual thing. Yes, that... I mean, the, the story to it is uh, that we're doing, like, a... Homenage for the for the building itself, since it had a a remodeling uh, plan uh, designed for a couple of years back. But this is a '50s building in, in Lower Manhattan, and since we're, I mean, the story begins with this cameraman back in the '50s, yeah. uh, and, and the and the element that that separates the time or, or, or updates the time back to nowadays is a post, a, a 
don't say, don't park, not, not parking supposed typical of New York, these green ones. And that's the transition between eras. And, and the same cameraman just uh, has a uh, more casual, uh, modern clothing. The car itself transformed to a, from a 50s to, to an actual one. And, and all the navigation, the, the, the walkthrough for, for the video is uh, this 50s man dressed, uh, walking through the building, showing you around. And that was part of the, the link between the two eras and, and from the actual... Uh, how, lo the how long did it take you to put together this uh, movie? That was two months of production. Two months of work. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine because you know there goes so much in uh, in a work like this, but the the quality of the image is stunning. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Fabio. Okay. I really um, like you know the the everything, the color, the composition, and I mean this is a work that it's you know already one year old. It's freaking yeah. amazing, man. Yeah, it's gonna be almost two on this January. Really. No, no, this July. I'm sorry, this July. Okay, okay. And uh, how many people d uh, worked on this? Two. Two people. God damn! I really need to speed up my game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, we we just uh, we didn't came up from the from the office like for two months, trying to experiment. Uh, since it was our first uh, time, we did something. Uh, for real, <laughs> um, yeah, we we did our best to, to, I mean, to tell a story and how to all these camera movements to puzzle up to create this uh, two minutes of animation. And what's what we would try to achieve was all the reflections had to had something since we always are told to take away the cameras that are on, on the reflections and uh, on the people and I the real thing how it would supposed to feel is uh yeah we'll have you will have reflections of the camera you have reflections of the drone trying through um, and, I mean those kind of small details that probably make the difference in in, in, in a production uh, for this animated film. Mm -hmm. Luis, I have a question because I know that a lot of people will ask me that. If somebody wants to work for you, what is what are the things that you look for in a candidate? Um, especially an eye for composition and 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 color and and, and all that. I mean, they could be doctors or lawyers. Uh, we don't care their background, but if they have a very good sense of composition and, and, and an eye for architecture, uh, moods, and all that, uh, that's, I mean, the technical stuff you can learn. They're, they're just um, tools, but to have an eye for, for really good composition and all that, that's what we would look for to outstand on the technical side. Okay. And what, what about the tools? Which tools do you guys use in, in your we, pipeline? We use the 3ds Max as our modeling software. And we use V-Ray for a rendering engine and Photoshop for post-production. And yeah. is your work really heavy on post-production or do you try to optimize everything in 3D? We try to optimize every time more of a 3D uh, raw um, image. Um, we do uh, put ourselves a lot of into detail, and but obviously it has a post-production filter on it. Uh, has yeah, uh, especially well, obviously integrating people, but the, the moody and contrasting and, uh, images are done in post-production. I don't remember who said it at the, at the D2 conference. Somebody said that a good rendering needs post-production because a good rendering would be like a good picture. So, you okay. know, to make a good picture, you also need to post-produce the picture a little bit. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you can uh, go out with uh, post-production. I mean, nowadays, it's a very handy tool. Obviously, uh, even for, like, tweaking some errors that you don't have the time to produce in, in, in 3D, I mean, it's, it's a tool that you have to use, definitely. But, I mean, I, I think we're not the, the kind of studio that, that uh, evolves more of a, 80% on post-production and less on 3D. We, we really like to do more of a, I mean, switching the 80% 3D and probably 20%. Because um, we, we, we like to get into details a lot once we're modeling and all. But the people Photoshop. Yeah, the people, yeah. I mean, we started to use uh, these 3D models, uh, especially for people that are, are way, way on the background, uh, just to fill uh, scenes. Uh, and they come in handy, but, I mean, because we, you, you won't see that detailed uh, uh, ugly people <laughs> that they still are. But, yeah, definitely <laughs> our, our, our images, well, well, our people are integrated in, in post-production. And I have some funny pictures of uh, 3D people that I was putting in my own work, <laughs> and some of them are extremely ugly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's, I think they, they haven't been to that quality yet to start using that. I mean, there, there are a lot of good uh, models out there, but we really won't use them as our foreground people and our... Yeah. But also because, you know, the, the selection is still very small. So even if yeah. you do buy a collection, you end up looking with, like, renderings that everybody else does. Exactly. So, you know, you need to have this huge amount of 3D scan people yeah. rendered. Uh, that, you know, probably in the future, when we're going to be able to do it with the phone, you know, yeah. then it will like, be something different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, what we started doing is to photo shoot uh, in house, uh, like people, or to integrate them uh, more formally and more accurately as well. Uh, but it's not our daily process. We haven't got into that, like to do all of our images. That's our goals this year, <laughs> like to start every, all, all of our images to have uh, photo shoot people in. That were set here in the, the office and with the story and all that. And that's it. You guys also organize workshops, if I don't mistake. I, I still well, back in the day, I started to do some workshops uh, in in Monterrey, basically, and I started. It, it's it's a, a a concept that I'm working on that I this year I will like formalize and, and it's called Learn. And, and basically that's what you'll be learning new stuff, new techniques, and not only for, in, in, for the art viz industry, like we have a, a, like a, an idea to, to do finance for like people that are uh, starting their own company and, and all that. Um, but yeah, I mean, we do, we've been, I started to do some workshops uh, late year, late of last year, and I mean, it turned out to okay. Uh, it was basically uh, focused on people integration, and probably we'll have a variety more of, of probably 3D or look and feel post production things this year. Maybe I'll join one of them myself. Definitely. Most welcome. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you never know. I mean, I'm planning to uh, to to go and see some uh, some friends in uh, in uh, in Mexico. Uh, one of them, you know, Osvaldo. I don't know if you. Osvaldo. I, I know a few Osvaldo. Uh... Sal Saltivar, Saltivar, Saltivar. I, I I think I have him in. He's a, he's a super fun guy and he came to, to see us at the, at the D2 conference and, okay. uh, you know, we talk a lot online and he made friends also with one of my ex-students, which then became one of my colleagues. 
And we have this idea to, you know, go to Mexico and do parties. Sometimes, you know, uh, in name of like the D2 conference, you never know. Maybe if we do it, we'll come and do a tour of all the best offices and we come and say hi. That would be great. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, listen, we are already uh, above the 30 minutes mark. <laughs> Usually I try to keep it 30 minutes or less. Okay. Uh, we are already 34 minutes in. Uh, yeah. I just want to thank you so much for you know taking the time. Uh, I really cannot wait to post this. I'm not sure where I'm, when I'm going to put it online because I have a, a huge list of other interviews yeah. that I've done. But I'm really excited and thank you very much for taking the time. What I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, stop the recording. Uh, don't go anywhere because then I'll say goodbye to you. But for now, if you want to say anything to the people, just go for it. <laughs> no, well, uh, thanks, thanks uh, Fabio, for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. On the contrary, it's a pleasure. And uh, for all of you guys uh, out there in the industry, well, just keep doing what you, what you love. Uh, um, peace. <laughs> Thanks a lot, dude. I I'll see you in a second. <laughs>